Movement is an inherent part of cinema, there is no questioning it. From the moment a moving train projected on screen scared an amateur audience, we became eager to achieve catharsis with this level of proximity to images once again. Movement became aesthetically significant in fulfilling a desire for projection. Yet despite how much we grew accustomed to cinema and its illusions, rarely do we see movement as something more than just a tool to achieving big levels of authenticity. The way that a cinematographic image can faithfully reproduce the moment-to-moment -moment of our lives is fascinating, and searching for these mundane subtleties, especially through movement, became primal to some filmmakers. Asian cinema in particular has shown itself a pioneer in the art of composition and modulation. The single shot was introduced in Japanese cinema by Mizuguchi with primacy, and not a single image was left aside or unbuilt with carefully well-distributed elements in space, in order to guarantee that the staging would occur in its most complex way. Kurosawa re-explored the staging dynamics with the objective of building a singular scene geometry. Names such as Hirokazu Koreeda keep on exploring creative compositions and multiple layers for a dynamic staging as a mark of the new Japanese cinema. These researches on visual exploration have become a key to reveal the true beauty of movement. Our eyes tend to be way less reductive than some movies make it seem with their excessive cuts and close-ups. It is essential to any good filmmaker to trust an observant audience and let their eyes roam the screen more freely. Parasite is the newest movie from Bong Joon-ho, the author of titles such as Memories of Murder and The Host. Although Korean cinema shares many characteristics with Japanese cinema, it is possible that Bong's movies are even bolder in concerns of staging direction. He is a master in conducting large groups of actors through the process of ensemble staging. I recommend watching Every Frame of Painting's Memories of Murder video for a more focused analysis on Bong's actor leading style and scene composition. Though the dialogues are equally precise and beautiful, his trademark on movement can be better observed in its most crowded scenes. A well-composed ensemble staging is achieved through the junction of space distribution and harmonic character movement. Both diegetic space, the scenario, and the screen's artificial space are molded to give more expression to the action on screen. Here, we see that the camera leaves the right side of the frame with enough space to catch the maid's entrance in the scene. As the mother continues to talk, the camera accompanies her movement as to not disengage her from the center. The movie is extremely precise about the geometrical division of the screen. It's pretty easy to notice how every frame utilizes the quadrant system in an expressive way. The very first scene has the sun centralized as he walks towards the camera. The sister appears on the left, but as the brother leaves, there's enough space on the screen center for the sister to occupy it for a brief moment. This direction is followed in a later shot where the son moves from the right to the center as the father assumes his prior position in the frame. The symmetry established afterwards is thus accentuated by this centripetal motion. It all helps to create a sense of presence and physicality to these characters and the space they share, even if most of the dynamic movement is achieved by a division of an artificial space. But more than just giving more expression to the character's presence, a well-conducted staging has dramatic purposes, by helping with the modulation of intensity. In this scene, the female worker stands in the center of the frame with most of the space surrounding her unoccupied. The family gradually suppresses this empty space while pressuring her to accept their bargains. It's barely noticeable, but the camera slowly zooms in as the scene unfolds. Similarly, in this scene, we have a dialogue without any cuts being conducted solely through eyes and body expression. The camera also slowly zooms in the characters. The staging, in these two cases, helps hide the camera movement and make the dramatic escalation more natural and harmonic. During the whole movie we never deviate from this approach to an ensemble staging, spread into a carefully divided space. As a rule, the camera movement maintains the center occupied by the character that assumes the leading role at the moment. Most shots usually have multiple layers as a way to split focus, and even dialogues respect this geometrical composition. Any reaction or important expression from the actors does not need a cut to isolate it, 
once there is always a coordination between the actors that naturally leads our eyes to where it matters the most. Just compare how many times Bong chooses to film a dialogue with the two characters standing side by side in the same frame, or having one of them in profile, and how many times he opts for shot, reverse shot. Almost every scene in Parasite is deserving of analysis, and all of them clearly state Bong's direction to lead actors into a harmonic staging between themselves and the space. Geometry is used to guide our eyes in such a way that preserves something natural from the human look into the real world. How the filmmaker conducts the staging operates in the same frequency, building these dynamic bodies so to reveal every little nuance of a scene in the movement itself. Now, time to address the elephant in the room. Parasite is a weird movie. We think it is a drama, then it becomes a comedy. Later, it is a thriller, goes back to comedy and ends up in tragedy. How can we explain so many genres in only one movie? The disorientated camera that follows the mother when she reaches the bunker certainly contains horror movie elements. The cyclical structure that imprisons each member of the family in their search for a role in the rich house, as if they were in a waiting line, is carried with humor. The absurdity of the story itself is somewhat comical and the end is tragic by obvious reasons. The flood scene is tragic thanks to an excellent use of parallel editing, combining two different tragedies that make part of the same nature even if in diverse contexts. Parasite is an uncomfortable movie. It's schizophrenic and absurd in what it proposes, but extremely natural and harmonic in its scene compositions. Our eyes may recognize the environment and the characters as concrete entities, close to reality, but all the rest is absurd. To me, what contributes the most for this discomfort is the mansion's architecture. It is not dynamic, nor has the pulsing activity of the crowded scenes or the clumsy dialogues. It consists itself in lines and more lines, annoyingly organized. Notice how practically every full shot in Parasite builds some sort of symmetry between the frame and the house's architecture. As an example, in this shot, we see a pillar divide the screen exactly in the middle, and on the right corner, the bottom of the stairs separating the kitchen from the rest of the chambers. The actor's movements are followed by the diagonal line of the handrail. As soon as the rich mother leaves the scene, the maid and the dog show up in the kitchen, perfectly framed by the elements that compose the house. On the upper floor, the camera slides back to emphasize perspective. Both ceiling and walls are lines that guide our look towards a vanishing point. Even if our capacity to establish a shot center and opposite sides is also due to geometry, it serves a different purpose in the direction of our eyes during these scenes. We no longer have fractions of the scenario being used as marks for the actors, and our eyes aren't being led by their movement in space. Geometry was used before only with the intention to help our perception of a natural movement. Here, our eyes get lost in the geometry itself. On the larger scale of the movie, it's impossible not to notice the use of verticality, which plays obvious reasons plot-wise. But had it not been for this consistent use of a diegetic geometry, the depiction of social inequality in the movie wouldn't be so striking. Although we can analyze the scenes with complex staging compositions in a systematic division of the screen, truth is that while we watch the movie, our eyes get lost in a much more chaotic drawing. We do not draw lines with our eyes when we see actors moving in any of the scenes that we have analyzed before. However, these lines come to exist as we observe the house. There is a dissonance not only among the narrative genres, but also in the direction of our eyes. The beauty in Parasite ultimately lies in our ability of self-conduction, built after the movie's visual elements as a means to reach a final point of reflection seeing that Bong does not try to explicitly state any affirmative about such system to lead our perception. We are always in a state above words, and taking the script itself, it's possible to say that the content means less than the variation of genres itself. Although it had been absolutely intentional from Bong to lead us to an unsettling state, the feeling we have when we watch the movie is that all these sensations have bloomed from us autonomously. Yet so, Bong's direction should be praised. Parasite does not hide the director's work only because certain autonomy is guaranteed to the viewers. 
On the contrary, the discharge of emotions felt in the end only approaches us from the subject behind the camera. Movies that build themselves as visually rich experiences have a singular personal beauty. They are almost intimate. The element that unites us in a common suffering is the gradual suppression of humanity proposed by Parasite. And only a few movies can create this feeling of unity.